So, you know, I stopped at the end of February, I was telling you, right? Officially, officially, in March, my movie went on. Oh, it went on the in-flight entertainment and oh. all the flight attendants and pilots were like sending me screenshots of the back of people's seats be like, yo, girl, what's up? I'm like, I went from in-flight service to in-flight entertainment, motherfucker. <laughs> Yo, welcome back to another episode of the Immigrant Section. It's your boy, Basil Hub. As always, appreciating y'all for tuning in to another banger. You know I'm going to bring it up July 7th. This Thursday, we're going live with the listeners. The meetup, it's going to be a shit show, unscripted. Meet, let's talk. I want to hear about the people that have been listening to this show, watching the show for a minute. I'm excited to meet y'all. Um, I have no idea how this is going to go, so I'm amped. Uh, scroll below, hit the link, leave your email, get the Zoom link, come out and watch the fucking circus go down. Enough of that for today's episode. Back in the studio. She hasn't been here in a couple years and things have changed dramatically. Hilarious comedian, actor, writer, Aliyah Kanani. What the hell's going on? What's up, Abbas? Look at you stepping up. This is so fancy. Listen, what do you think? You brought out the big guns for me. I like it. Oh. I like it. No, I'm very impressed with the studio. I feel like uh, two years, you've you've really you've done very well. Congratulations! You even have an extra person here now. Producer, he actually Producer. The, the way he connected, he heard me being in an episode. Like, will someone help me? Somebody help! Literally, <laughs> and he's like, he's like, you, you, he's my like, guy. I, I, heard I see you what most, you're doing, but it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> in the most recent episode, I heard you were desperately calling for help. <laughs> I couldn't help but hear that. You know, well, welcome, welcome. Wonders. Thank you're you. one of those people that uh, I never know where the fuck you are in the world. Bye. Yeah, I just see you every two months. I'm like, were you on Mars? Are there shows on <laughs> Mars now? Like, you know what's w- fucked up? I don't even tell people half the places I go. I swear to God. Well, how would they keep up? I, you know what? I like to secretly run away. Like I've, I've been, I've been, I've been, uh, yeah, <laughs> I've been to like Peru and Tanzania this year. Nobody knows. You know what I mean? Like this I just year. keep that stuff on the down low. But Tanz is family, right? That's my family. Yeah. I went there. I went there to chill and just be like unplugged. You know what I mean? Like that's the thing. When I, when I go away sometimes it's really just to like be away. You know, so I just uh, I just I have some stuff that I post when I have shows and then I have some stuff where I'm like, y'all don't got to know. I'm just living my best life. <laughs> that Zanzibar lifestyle. That Zanzibar lifestyle, yo. Mm. Also, I feel weird telling people because I feel very, very luxurious. I feel very spoiled to be able to do this kind of stuff. So I'm like, I don't know. You know when people post their vacation pics and shit like that? And they're like, you're oh, like- just chill on the beach. And you're like fuck you. We're stuck in the winter. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't want to be that person who's like just like. But I, you know, you know, I still got my flight passes and stuff. So I'm still out here doing my things. Ali used to be a flight attendant for many years and she still got the hookups in the sky, them sky hookups. Sky hookups. Isn't it funny? I have a a little inferiority complex deep down where it's like, if I show the people too nice of a vacation, they're not going to come to the shows anymore. They're going to think I'm killing it or something, (laughs) which is insane. They're like, oh, they're going to ask for free tickets. So they're going to be like, listen, you can afford these flight tickets. I ain't paying for my comedy (laughs) tickets. You feel me? Clearly you're doing well. (laughs) That's why I always mention the flight passes. I'm like, I'm still poor. (laughs) I'm still very poor. (laughs) You have to. They're like, all right, I'll get a ticket. You know, it's so weird. I'm still waiting eight hours on standby. Okay. Yo, you know what? I went from, so when I was in Perth, uh, like on my way back from Australia. Australia for the gigs. I I was there. Uh, I was there for for gigs. Right. I was touring uh, just a couple months ago. Uh, I was gonna ask about that. And yeah, came but, up perfectly. But then I. Uh, but then on my way uh, back, I keep looking at the camera. Like the people can see. The people. Me. That is the people. That though. is the people. Yeah. What's up, people? Uh, <laughs> but let me get in on this vision. Though. But I. <laughs> <laughs> but I on the way um, coming back, I decided to go home for a couple weeks. Um, and, uh, and so I, I was flying on standby and what was supposed to be originally a 19 and a half hour journey, which already is quite a bit of a journey you would think, right? The flight filled up. And so I had to reroute, took me 41 hours, Jesus, 41 hours to get to Dar. It was super worth it still, but oh my goodness, let me tell you, when you travel for that long, you start reevaluating your choices in life, you know. Jesus. You know like, maybe I, these flight paths ain't working for me. I go go get myself a sugar daddy, <laughs> a sugar mama. A and sugar then you're somebody. like, you know what? How much is a flight? They're like fourteen hundred. You're like, you're like I'm forty one hours to wait. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I'll make that I'm much. I'm gonna money. go back to sleep. I'm ready. <laughs> I like how worldly worldly you are. You said Dar instead of Dar Islam. Yeah. That's how people don't even know. 
people are learning about Tanzania as a country right now, yeah. and you're saying Dar. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, yeah. This is fucking people love. <laughs> well, I used to live there, right? So that's my. Uh, Did you grow up there? No, I mean, I like partly, partly. I lived there for a couple years when I was like, we moved there when I was 14 years old. Um, but I, like, I, I think and grew I, up here. Yeah, but not here, like in Toronto, like North I North America. In yeah, mostly in Canada, exactly. Yeah, that my little brother and sister went to Sudan like around twelve. That's yeah. fucked up when you come up in the first world. Buddy. And was it like were they like this girl has no religion, she has no culture. We need to take her back and immerse her. That's that's why they sent my little brother. That's what happens, right? That's what what happened happens. with you? No, mine was my my dad was like, I need help raising these girls. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and my aunt was like, Come here. <laughs> yeah, it takes a village so, to raise them. Yeah, totally. And uh, so we went. We we lived with uh, my aunt. aunt at the same time and we all kind of like were there for a couple of years and then and then then we came back but uh but it was you know honestly of us like people are always like yo was it like a crazy like culture shock when you went from like you know living in canada to like moving to to to, to dar salaam in east africa and i'm like yeah but i moved around so much like let's talk about the culture shock of moving from calgary to toronto yeah you know what i mean like i 100%. was like in calgary like hanging out with like just like a bunch of white folk you know what i mean like learning how to line dance going to like the the as you do square dancing things you know what i mean and like going to the what's it called the, the stand stampede right and then like within the same summer we like moved to, to toronto and now i'm like living in this like neighborhood which is like full of jamaicans like not nah, like learning now. how to yeah i'm <laughs> learning how to butterfly and going to carabana you know what i mean and like this this like bandana i had around my neck all of a sudden like made its way to my back pocket like real styling you know yeah. what i mean i'm like that was a culture shock let me tell you you know i love it, yeah. it but growing up there like did you used to go for summers and then, like at fourteen, you went back for no, like a couple no, of years. No, 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 no. Fourteen was the first Africa. Well, I went when I was a baby. Gotcha. No, but that doesn't count. That. that doesn't count. No, no, no. The, yeah. my Unless first... you were like an advanced Jimmy Neutron style baby, <laughs> which I'm assuming you were a regular baby. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it was kind of like a half Jimmy. <laughs> we'll come back <laughs> to like, that. Yeah, we'll circle back. She turned out she was a baby genius. We'll I circle love how back. I just tried to look at your camera. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, yeah. wait a minute, that doesn't work. <laughs> it's okay. Um, You're no, very. But yeah, was... You got that uh, industry proficiency. You're like, which is my camera? You're like all of them. It's like perfect. Can, um, can you give us a tight on number two? Can you two? imagine I just come in and just turn your camera yeah, off? Yeah, like yeah. a boss, relax. They've yeah. seen enough of this. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do what the people want. I know what they're doing I did at home. I'm her for this. Yeah, okay, yeah. like let's just. Um, but like, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was cool. It was actually, honestly, it was really cool moving to Dar when I was 14. Like as much as like, yeah, like shit was different, whatever. It was also like really like, you know, when I was a kid growing up, like we. We had such different, like, we had our home life, which was, like, one thing. And we had, like, our own home culture and our family culture. And our people would come over. Like, my family would, we'd, like, we'd have, like, an open door. We'd all have cousins coming through no matter where we lived. In Dar? People coming through. No, in, in Canada. Gotcha, you know gotcha. what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, like, you know, the Browns and the, the you know, the, the we all gather, right? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but then I'd go, like you know, school in people's homes, like friends' homes and stuff like that. And I'd always feel really weird. Like, I remember, like, I went to, like, this, like, friend's house when I lived in Calgary. And they were, like, just, f like, like eating dinner or whatever, da-da-da. And I, like, left and I came home and I was, like, in tears. And my mom was, like, what's wrong? I'm, like, I don't think they liked me because they didn't feed me. And, like, we grew up where, like, you always feed people. Do they you know didn't give I mean? you a plate? No, it was really weird. It was, like, we'll just, like, have you wait. We're just finishing up dinner kind of thing. It was very... Whoa. But, like, in, then I got to dog. You know, I went to like when I got to Tanzania, I moved there when I was 14. I was like, oh, everybody here is like us. They all like shove food down your throat of and course. talk super loud and wave their hands around it like super dramatically for like, you Love know. Love language is just a North American invention for the rest of the world. Uh, it's just food. You There's know, no, it's just is it food. acts of, no, it's, no food. it's food. It's just it's food. Food. It's food. It's food. So it's like, it's weird because I felt like instantly when I got there, I was like, oh, this is home. Yeah. This is where I'm from. This you is know where why that would never happen in my house? It's not even that my mom is so benevolent and wants to help everyone. Yeah. It's her fear that it would get out, <laughs> that this child came to her house and was not space? fed. <laughs> oh, the fear right. in the community, the right. damnation That's in the so community. Funny. Of He's like, did you hear? Yeah. Didn't even offer him shy. Didn't offer water. Yeah, right. Nothing. Sent him home hungry. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? And, and she leads the halaqa in the, the Quran thing. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like her priorities aren't right. You know what I mean? Like, like that's and the I biggest And I heard they fear. bought a new car, so yeah. I guess it's not a financial issue. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? Guess they had money for something. You know, that's the fear. That's really funny. But it's true. Back there, it's all like open door. That That's kind of... Oh, that's It's weird to say, but all these like North American countries, you know, Canada is so new. Yeah. We're such a like a mixing pot of all these people. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to have that like open door because there's so many little like tribes. But when you go back yeah. to like it's kind of one tribe. Like when I'm in Sudan, it's pretty much 99 Sudani, yeah. 99% Sudan. You see yeah. a couple like Chinese foreign investors doing this and that and, yeah. and UN people. But besides that, 99% Sudani. Right. So it's like one tribe. And even though like little villages are split up and stuff, for the most part, it is kind of an open door policy. You can like kind of like go into someone's courtyard and be like, I need help and type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here it's like, make sure your lawn, make sure you are good with the neighbor to your right. Make sure you're good with the neighbor to your left. Yeah. Make sure you mow your line, uh, mow your lawn, pay your taxes. Yeah. And fucking that you're good in the eyes of society. Totally, totally. Well, but, it's, but it's very much like it's... You know, it comes down to like the you know the idea of, like the collectivistic society versus the individualistic society, and like that's China versus America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's communism. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, is that not the collective? No, but like the collect. I mean, yes, okay, sure, yeah. yes, yeah. sure. I mean, but that's the extreme of yeah. it. But you know, I'm talking more about like community. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like, uh, like an, uh, in Dar, like literally, you could walk up to anybody who's got a plate of food and they're eating, and if you walk by them or you walk and you don't know them, and they got only enough for themselves, they'll still say karibu. Which is welcome. Dig in, okay. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, dig in. Caribou. Welcome. Caribou. Yeah. Caribou. Caribou. Imagine meeting a, a <laughs> Tanzanian out. in Canada eating caribou. Oh my God. Can I get in? Caribou. What is it? Caribou. caribou. No, I'm, I'm about to eat, but what is it? <laughs> I'm guessing you went to private school. No way they put you in public school at 14. No, no way. We went to the international school. Yeah. Uh, it was actually quite hilarious too because. Um, a lot of Indians, right? A uh, lot of everybody, actually. There were a lot of lot of everybody. It was like a really like there's so many um, expats and stuff there. So there was a lot of white folk. There were a lot of Indian folk. There was a lot of black folk. Like it was everyone. Um, but we went. <laughs> it's very expensive, yeah. and we did not have the money. Yeah. But my dad One managed semester. to get us a scholarship. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all three of us. Yeah. Um, because my aunt was kind of like well known and like as like a very like community blah 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 person yeah uh so already we had that on our side the scholarships like they they can line dance they can dutty yeah. wine <laughs> they can right? do old canada they're very talented <laughs> they <can make> syrup. <laughs> but it was more yeah no they just like they they used the pity card they're like their mother's dead yeah. <laughs> they're like oh they're like, they're oh, like well, we don't know what to do with them so we brought them here it was very how many siblings yeah uh three uh, like two sisters so there's they're like oh well three spots just opened up yeah right no honestly Mr. Kanani. they literally they literally yeah. pulled out the little yeah. violins and, yeah. and made it work you know what i mean but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta lean into it. this is i this is where i learned my hustle yeah i swear <laughs> to god like all my hustle comes from this it's you go just, and it's like my mom's dead it's like ma'am be that as it may you need to pay for this ttc <laughs> <Yeah>. right <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You be a that, grown ass woman. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not over yeah. it. I can't afford it. Be that therapy. as it may. <laughs> Anytime you were like, had a. Uh, would people, when you were doing flight attendant stuff, by the way, real quick, mm. what's happening with all of the airlines right now that they're fucked and they're. They're, what, what, what is the is it that fuel costs are so high what is it right now they are so understaffed and it's is just, it because people don't want to work at airports is it because people don't want to work do you know what it is I think that honestly it has a lot to do with the wages like they're not paying folks enough the minimum yeah you know like honestly there was like a huge uh, you know a few years back contract renewals across the board and everyone from like the caterers to the groomers to everybody like got you know just shafted like it's you know rumors yeah the people who groom the uh the the aircraft oh gotcha yeah, maintenance yeah. people uh well that that sorry that clean the aircraft but sorry it's a shorthand we call groomers gotcha. uh yeah yeah um the, it's the a dar that, thing isn't it no, dar that's groomers. That's, it's, there's that's a list airline, dante you put together a list lingo. right put together the list <laughs> fucking jargon yeah right um, um they're just i'm being underpaid for I think that that's what it is, and they can't hold on to staff enough. You know, like it's it's. It, I, I think it's a combination of things. You know, poor planning. Uh, obviously, COVID. You know, 
like really like destroy the the travel industry and a lot of people went on to find other jobs gotcha. and then it was like f for them to come back it didn't maybe seem worthwhile for a lot of folks so then they had to hire and train but they can't do it fast enough because like the industry literally went from like a standstill to like booming again in like a month and yeah. now more than ever folks are like oh better travel while i can so it's almost like a surge yeah and and i they just they can't, just can't it's, support it terrifying like i gotta go to edinburgh for the festival uh in august and i'm planning to go i wanted to be there um a couple days early but now with everything going on i'm planning to leave even a couple days earlier than i was planning to leave because of the because you're insanity. assuming there'll be cancellations and stuff. i i mean i just i it'd be silly for me to take a risk do gotcha. you know what i mean like yeah. i have the information in front of me um so i better prepare accordingly <laughs> yeah i was just at the gym right before this and they're like uh, hundreds of flights canceled and thousands left. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. Well, what's with... They're just unmanned? They're just like... Yeah, there's just not enough staff. Like, I, I huh. literally, like, I, I have flights. But how do they get friends. booked in the first place, these flights? I know. Right? I know. Everything is like prospective with fucking, with the airlines. It's like a... It's almost like they need... I, it's almost like an industry that can't be profitable. It has to be government run because it's like fuel costs... Freaking the massive amount of employees they need to run airports. Mm -hmm. It's like it always seems anytime I deal with Air Canada or Pearson, it feels like it's run by Service Ontario, Service Canada. Right. Just like yeah. people that are kind of like on that nine to five, like I'm going to clock out at five. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. deal with this tomorrow type of vibe because it's like no one is being incentivized to work hard. No, There's totally. no one being incentivized to hustle. Totally. You know? Totally. I just I just imagined a whole scene in my head of like you walk up to like the desk at the at the service Ontario and you're like, hi, I'd like to and you're like, uh, hold on. Mm. And they just like start counting down. They're like, mm, just clocked out. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah they're, they're the worst. <laughs> you know who's the worst for customs? You know, like when you land in a country and you're even if you're connecting, you don't have to go through customs, right? Uh, if you're connecting, you don't have to know. Yeah. So well, it depends on the country, but no. Generally. Uh, I think, oh, this was America, so I had to go through customs. Even okay. I landed in Dallas. Mm. Like, I've been all over there. Probably not as many places as you, but like in China, which is another place that I thought they would flex on you, they like process people quickly. There's a big line. A bunch of planes just landed. They go, to see your passport, blah, 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 blah. Boom, boom, boom. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I connected through Dallas one time, and it was the most like... U.S. authoritative <laughs> bullshit I've ever seen. It was first of all, it was like ten customs booths, yeah. and only four were manned. Right, and the four guys all had like cowboy hats on, like as part of the uniform. And they do this thing where they like log in. There's a full line, a full plane just landed. There's right. two hundred people. There's like f the all of those people have funneled to four lines in front of those four manned booths, and everyone's just like. Before they'll open the fucking window or anything, they're just stretching, logging. They won't look at everyone. And then when they're finally ready, they'll be like, I, That I'm like, is the most and I'm condescending this, people this, back. this when they yeah. don't look at you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, like I've logged just, in. I'm not changing my pace for you. You're in America. This is my... Yeah. Like, it's so like, America. Jesus yeah, Christ, no, relax know. with I this know. shit. I relax. Know. Buddy, it's it's honestly it's like this it's but it's the two extremes. Like I've had also I remember this one time I was going through customs and this dude, he's like looking at my passport and he's like, So where are you going to? And I'm in my uniform, right? And I'm like, Why are you asking me questions? You have all my information in the system. You know what I mean? Like you know everything about me. You know more about me than I know about yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like I should be asking you questions. They're like, you should right? get a tampon soon, you're almost <laughs> <laughs> you're like, what? I, I swear to God. <laughs> Right? So I'm like out here going through. And he's like, where are you off to? And I'm like, Atlanta. He's like, ATL, hot Atlanta, ATL in the house. And I'm like, what is happening right now? I know. And he's like, so you go sit by the poolside and hot ATL. And I'm like, what is, this is not appropriate, sir. <laughs> I'm in my uniform. <laughs> I, don't I don't know get how any to respond. The, I don't get any of that banter. It's just either like, you're a threat or I'm just fucking that, like jaded, like da, 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 go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I love. I no, want someone I want who is close to suicide. Wanna... <laughs> I want that's yeah. the customs the officer I want. Care yeah, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> the one who's just wife just left him. Yeah. Is just because he doesn't communicate. You know, just like that, that, that. He go. hasn't even brushed his teeth this morning. If yeah. he doesn't care about his own dental matter. hygiene, He's in the booth. what does he care about? He's in you know the booth. what I mean? Let it, me go. It's his own problem. Yeah. Let me through and deal with your shit. Have later. you ever gotten pulled aside for like secondary where they go through your bags and like 
like check for all that stuff? Never at customs. Only back in the day when I used to fly with my parents to to and from Sudan. Yeah, yeah. A one hundred percent percent of the time we would because we'd bring back sp spices and stuff one guy would be like do you guys have food i'm like we have spices and he goes well do you eat spices i'm like nine <laughs> i'm like fuck you got me <laughs> I, I thought i was i thought i was being like there's spices they're not food he's like well do you, he was so condescending even to me and i was literally just like damn it these people are good they train these people fuck <laughs> this guy's graduated from harvard i bet next level yo <laughs> yeah. he's one step ahead he's this good this guy's good this guy must be james bond or some shit he's that's questioning power right there. <laughs> You're like, hats off to you. <laughs> yeah. He didn't even have to burn, put out a fucking cigarette on my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> but you just start confessing everything yeah, you've ever yeah, done yeah, in life. Like, All like, right. I remember one time in high school, but I didn't know she was married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, it is food. And there's also actual food in the bag. So much. So many mangoes. Fuck. You I, know that apparently you can bring through tropical fruits? that are not grown in this country as long as you claim them. They're always pushing to find out if you have fruit. Buddy, I know. I just newly discovered this. I thought they were like invasive or something. That's listen, they're trying to protect. I thought them. so too. Yeah. And you then mango so trees my, everywhere. <laughs> I'm telling you, listen, my ex who like he's still like we're very very tight. He's a pilot this is way too much information about me i should hell just, no okay anyway wow i'm just letting loose here i like it the flight oh, attendant got a pilot oh shit yeah. coming out. Listen, like, i cut know this, i wanted cut. these oh my god I'm such a were the other chick. flight attendants like how's that pilot oh my god <laughs> you know honestly, know right? honestly see you're working your way up <laughs> <laughs> like pardon me i'm just gonna go to the cockpit <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i'm gonna co-pilot this they're like that's actually illegal like extremely illegal don't worry about it i'm boo said it's yeah, okay <laughs> he's my guy he's my guy he's bay pilot my bay so he's still so he goes uh to to mexico now it's one of his new routes and he was working with a flight attendant who was like uh she's like oh i'm gonna hit up the fruit market before i leave and he's like what are you talking about and she was like yeah i'm gonna bring back some mangoes and he's like, yeah, I'm taking back mangoes. And she's like, yeah, you can as long as you claim them. You can take back any tropical fruits that are not grown in the country. I got so excited, I bashed my face into the mic. Yeah, you ran. <laughs> mangoes! <Yeah. laughs> so, so now he started bringing back mangoes. Like all the time. Buddy, mangoes, passion fruit, uh, 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 passion guava. Fruit. <laughs> what yeah. happened to the relationship? <laughs> this guy's got passion If he had known about this fruit thing yeah, earlier, yeah, maybe exactly. it would have fucking lasted. You know what I mean? He's on a plane watching this like, damn it. <laughs> fucking turbulent. Uh, the lady, I'm in the love the turbulent. But yeah, no, it's good. He brought me fruit the other day. I was like, yeah, hell yeah. So, so if, it's, if it's not native to Mexico or if it's not native to if Canada? It's not native to Canada. Gotcha. What are you asking me? Well, then, because I'm like, <laughs> wow. I'm like, okay, if it's native to them, does it mean that it's going to grow? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. They've been asking. It's literally <laughs> right after firearms on the no, customs I, paper. I understand Do you why have you're flustered. firearms? I didn't believe Do it you either. Have fruit? I honestly, I was like, you might, well, you might as well bring cocaine while yeah. you're at it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was really. I'm waiting for the person to be like, you can bring firearms in. You just got to claim them. Yeah, you got to <laughs> claim them yeah they just gotta be tropical to the to, the, to not tropical as long as they're not made uh, in Beretta, canada that's made in yeah, america yeah. bring it in absolutely Come on. <laughs> is he still uh doing the pilot game mm -hmm. uh, how long do like because i feel like pilots would last this whole thing is just becoming about flight and i love it fuck it i know right i'm also a comedian by the way <laughs> yeah oh we're getting to that we're getting to that uh i feel like flight attendants get jaded faster and and they have less of like um a run in that space than pilots because pilots the working conditions have to be way better than flight attendants right homie have you not been on airplanes i've you, never seen a not, very old flight attendant but i've seen fl very old pilots all the time oh because you probably just okay listen when you start flying more internationally you'll yeah. see you'll see the the uh, more senior flight attendants because they get the better routes an international flight is preferred yeah yeah well it depends it depends on it depends on the route. You know, you want the product productivity. It depends on the layover, blah, blah, blahs. But, uh, yeah, absolutely. Like, when you start going to, like, Santiago or, like... Santi. That right away, you hear... Or, like, Hong Kong or something. Like, you'll see... Santiago. You know, you'll see the routes. So you as don't. soon as you land, Listen, you're it's, pregnant. It's very good working <laughs> conditions. It used to be. Now, like, now for, like, the new low-cost carriers, 
the absolutely like Swoop you know and shit. then yeah then you're gonna find a lot of turnover and stuff like this but for like the old school contracts yeah. oh my goodness like if people were people my flight attendant friends and like pilot friends and all everybody in the industry was like are you sure because nobody walks away from the old contract, and I was on the old contract. What like the benefits are crazy? The pay benefits is are like crazy. great. Pay is great. You're unionized. You're protected. Like nothing. You got like, homie. I could call. I could call in and be like, I don't feel well, and they're like, call us when you're better. I'm like, thanks. And that job is waiting for you. Wow, buddy. But you did it for how many years at that point? I did it for almost 15 years. At that point, mm-hmm. when I quit. Yeah, well, then it's like... Which was just now. I just stopped. Oh, yeah? But mm-hmm. I thought you stopped last time you came on the podcast. No, maybe I pretended that I'd stopped. I like that. I, <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like You're a liar, Leon. I, I like am. It. I really am. I'm very <laughs> yeah. good at it. You're am like, I even here though. right now? Am <laughs> I even here? You're like, my mom's dead, though. <laughs> You're like, oh, well, Leah, I'll let you go. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, mom. Don't yeah. listen to this podcast. I'll, I know you hate it when I say that. <laughs> I'll let you go. I'll let, I can't be mad at you. <laughs> but the 15 years... Wow, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, that's well, a long so time. I actually did stop when I talked to you the last time. What had yeah. happened was, um, I think I talked to you just like when uh, the COVID stuff I think was. I might even been in COVID. It yeah, was in my basement, I think it was right? in COVID, and and that and at that time I had stopped. Yeah. Um, but then I got because uh, I took a like basically I took a bit of a leave, and then I um, ended up getting laid off anyways because of the COVID stuff. So I was off for two years, and then I got called back in. Um, mid 2021 or late 2021 to come back in because now they were doing recalls. They were super short staffed, so everybody was forced to come back. So technically, I was still on their roster, even though I wasn't working for a few years. Got you. You were like a reservist at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I was out here like living my best life because I had like that in my back pocket if I needed to come back to it. But I was doing the comedy full time. But now they were like, Aaliyah, you got to come back. I'm like, I ain't ready. They're like, you don't have a choice. I'm like, but I ain't ready. And I'm like, okay, can't come back part time. They're like, no. I'm like, fuck. So then I just took the retirement package. I'm retired, by the way. I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> like, Do you get like a little plane on your driver on your license plate? Little plane, like yeah, oh, right? she put her ears in. Right, I should, I should. But yeah, so I'm I'm retired now. Wow, congrats, mm-hmm. congrats. You. So you're Thank just you're a veteran. Do Do they prefer a uh, flight attendant? As opposed to, <laughs> there's like stewardess and oh, like a yes, bunch of stuff. Oh yes, 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 yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. the title, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they do. Yeah, it I is. Mean, I mean, uh, yes. I, it depends I, on who you talk to. Like, I'm not a very particular person. Do you know what I mean? Like, you just don't call me bad names, and I'm cool. <laughs> you know <what> I mean, <laughs> um, but like stewardess, stewie, air the, hostess. The real minority up there is straight males. <laughs> yeah, but feel, also like, how do straight like males get by? also straight men. What are you doing? Like get <laughs> get with it. Like you out here with a, a bunch of honeys. You know I mean, <laughs> going to tropical places. Like it's a good gig for a straight man. You know, fucking fifteen. That's so. What's one of the sickest places? I just um, knocked yeah, his camera. No, nah, it's all good. Oh. It shifted. Everything. It's so good. Okay, <laughs> we're getting like, a uh, thumbs up. For by the Dante. way, Dante is the uh, is the thing recording? Yeah, everything's recording. Yeah. My guy. Can you imagine? Beautiful. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> yeah, we're not recording on anything right now. <laughs> that was FYI, But I round. love this. But I, this is so this good, though. For, if this was just for me, guys, I'm enjoying <laughs> What's the route every like flight attendant wants? What's like, uh, um, out of the ones you used to do, like you guys would service, what's the most highly coveted, like, yo, give me that shit. Come on. Well, I mean, I used to fly just the domestic and transborder stuff because it was better for my schedule. Yeah. And I had more control. So, like, if I'm talking about, like, my stuff, oh, we'd like to go to places like, I know it sounds so lame, but, like, Houston because there was, like, a yeah, beautiful pool in the back. And it was always warm, you know what I mean? And you'd just be, like, chilling at your hotel, just, like, living your best life. There was, like, a like a gas station that sold liquor right across the street. You're like, Ooh. what else do we need here? You know what you I mean? Lo- you're living life. You're like, sitting poolside with, like, a little mojito cocktail, you know what I mean? Like, every time you hit a city, dinner. you hit the same hotel? Most For the most part, yeah, for the most part. So you, like... Every time you hit a city, you know the restaurants you're going to go to. You know, like, yeah. you know your little, like, circuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, like, I mean, I, to be honest with you, I wouldn't go and go to, like, dining and all of this because I was on my hustle. Do you know what I mean? I was, like, saving my pennies so I could gotcha, go gotcha. and 
uh, travel on my own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could retire because yeah. uh, I would travel on my own a lot. So what I'd do is I'd, I'd like bunch a bunch of my days together because you'd work when you were full time as a flight attendant, you'd work about 16 days in a month. Yeah. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but you're working like 12 hour days, 14 hour days. Like you're working a lot and you're away from home. Yeah. Right. So I'd bunch all my days together and I do like tops and bottoms. So I do like, let's say we're in January. So I'd put like all of my January at the end of January. And then I put all of my February at the beginning of February. And then I would take all my days off at the end of February and then all my days off at the beginning of March and do the same things so that oh. I'd have like chunks of like so you three, work a month take a weeks, month off basically kind of so I'd just be working my ass off you know what I mean if I had a cool crew I'd go out for a couple of drinks sometimes but yeah. for the most part like I'd like bring food with me I'd like you know like like rest and do do my things whatever and then I'd go on trips because people were always like oh uh, you know like when they first start working as flight attendants you have to work your way up the salary like how do you afford to travel I'm like mm, I know how to like live on very little I've yeah. done it before yeah, yeah you mean I like that's how I you right <laughs> yeah and like even I was on my own since I was a kid like yeah. I just learned to like live off of not a lot so I was very good at being able to continue that lifestyle of like not having a, like a like luxurious kind of uh you know tendencies and tendencies whims. Yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. and then i would like save my money and then i'd be like you know what for this 500 dollars that i did not spend on my overnights yeah. i can now like spend a week in vietnam like yeah. with all of my accommodation yeah. my you flight like a queen my my food my everything do you know what i mean so like that's how i made it work and then after that like when i started doing comedy then you know again like i was just trying to like minimize how much i had to work so that I could like focus as much as I could on comedy. And at, like for about five years, I was part time as a flight attendant while I was doing comedy full time. Yeah. So like, you know, again, it was just like, you know, I wasn't like going out and going nuts on my layovers, but I have some amazing layovers. Like, Would you hit open mics sure. abroad? Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sometimes it was always tricky because I always wanted to book. Like, I'm like, shit, man, I got like 20 hours in New York. Like I should book some gigs. Yeah, yeah. But then I'd always be afraid that like, it's going to be the time that I book the gig that they're going to change my routes yeah. or I'm going to be delayed or they're going to send me to like uh, and across I'm be the country instead. That scene. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so I wouldn't risk it, but I'd hit mics. I'd hit yeah. mics. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Uh. Definitely. And like, I just like do things like, like I said, like I'm, I'm real like good at like, you know, like I'd like, you know, I, I'd have like the best time. Like I'd tell, I'd show flight attendants how to live their best lives and be like, listen, so what we're going to do is instead of it's going show out, up, go up. I'm going to grab a bottle of wine yeah. and we're going to grab two of those coffee mugs from the hotel room and we're going to just go for a stroll around the city. Yeah. And so we just like walk and drink instead of going out to a bar and spending a ton of money and see the whole city in the meantime. Oh, like it. I'd have the best times on layovers. You're yeah. like the open mic list drops at seven. So we're going to wander for about four hours. Sign up. We'll probably get up around 830. We'll come back around eight. Right, I'll like, do my spot. They said it's a bringer show, it's so a bringer show, you're so my you bringer. <laughs> okay, you will all have to be paying tickets, but I'm gonna kill, so it'll be fine. Uh, and then, yeah, maybe we'll just try to find another open mic afterwards. Right, but like we're not traveling with you again. No, totally right. What but, what are flight attendants doing in the sky that we don't know? Like when you guys are like, what are, are you guys smoking cigarettes up there? Are you guys smoking I weed up there? You're retired. I can't tell you my secrets. You're uh, done. It's all. I know. I'm still trying to get them to sponsor me. You lost your <laughs> union rep. Yeah, I know. Air Canada. Really? Like, are you going through full? I've thought about it. Yeah. I haven't contacted them yet, but I think I'm going to. I think it'd be great for them. The, they they've actually recently laid off the sponsorship uh, representative, so that's gonna <laughs> right. have a good time trying to get a hold of them. <laughs> we respect the your emails, and we will get to them I think at I stand our first a chance. And then they're gonna come to my show and be like, "She tells what kind yeah, of jokes?" Exactly. And I'll be like, uh, "I flew with Air Canada, the most amazing yeah. airline." Yeah, that's like, like half continue. my show is just me talking about how great the airline is, you know I mean? and then it's, it's just... killing because everyone knows you're being sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> You know what's crazy about us? Can I tell you something crazy about being a flight attendant? Please, please. About about having stopped? So, you know, I stopped at the end of February, I was telling you, right? Officially, officially, I took the, dun, the dun. retirement package. Yes. In March, my movie went up. Congrats, Scarborough, Scarborough, right? Scarborough, it went on the in-flight entertainment and oh. all the flight attendants and pilots were like sending me screenshots of the back of people's seats be like, yo, girl, what's up? I'm like, I went from in-flight service to in-flight entertainment, motherfucker. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so sick. It's but so did sick. you write that? No. I know you starred in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot if you wrote it because I saw no, a bunch no, of the no. things. Catherine that... Hernandez. Catherine Hernandez wrote this book, yeah. uh, which was a best-selling novel. Um, Called? 
uh, called Scarborough. Gotcha. Uh, and then uh, I she offered to turn name shit. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> You're like called Scarborough. Called Scar. I don't know if they changed the name shit. Okay, this guy has to do research yeah. before he has his. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Fuck and Dante. Then, uh, Fuck, dude. I told you to get on this. <laughs> He's getting hit after you. Dante, where are the cheat sheets, <laughs> motherfucker? <laughs> like, uh, so yeah. So anyway, so Catherine, who is like just this amazing author pioneer woman, like. Just really just uh, wrote this amazing, you know, uh, novel which touched so many people. And then she turned it into a screenplay. And then she um, connected with these amazing directors who were actually documentary filmmakers. Okay. But she was like, I just wanted it to have this like real feeling of like not the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, but like the authentic real feel of what Scarborough is. Is there any scenes from it from you on YouTube? Um, the, the trailer's on YouTube. Yeah. If we play the uh, if we play the trailer, will they pull it or what? Um, Are you in the trailer? Yeah. Just for like a hot in, second. Yeah, hundred percent. Type in Scarborough. Scarborough movie. I'm assuming. Yeah, Scarborough. Uh, trailer. Oh, Scarborough trailer. The third one right there. Yeah, there you go. Scarborough Right here. This one. Yeah. Beautiful. I need you to wake up, please. What's happening? It's not safe here anymore. So we're gonna go somewhere where we're safe. Okay. That's a, no, 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 it's a lot of wreaths. That's a lot of wreaths. No, this one, Best Motion Picture for the Canadian Get Screen Awards. That's our Academy Awards, yo. Yo, I know, I know. Cass, right? Yeah. Or Cass? CSA. 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 Catherine Hernandez. There we go. Maybe we can find the right oh, supports for him. Can you really oh, afford shit. to add that to the current challenges that you're doing? It's such a good I'm wondering how much I can include of this you before YouTube says something, huh? I YouTube's gonna have a problem with it. Oh, this isn't uh, Scarborough. This isn't Scarborough, right? Yeah, they, so yeah. they filmed it in Scarborough. Like, the way they, those very... income tax plazas, I'm like, that is either Eglinton right here yeah, right? or Scarborough. Oh, there you are. Oh, you're a teacher. Yeah. Okay, all right. We pause it. That's it. We got pulled. Is that you? Yeah. So, so what's the role? Uh, so I'm Miss Hina. I'm uh, Miss like Hina, like the Hina. Hina, Hina. Hina. gotcha, Hina, gotcha, Hina. gotcha. Hina. Uh, which I'm like the 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 person who runs the literacy center. Oh, so you're like a bad bitch. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bad bitch. <laughs> yeah. I am a bad bitch. Honestly, dude, yeah. listen, this role was I can't tell you. First of all, you know that I was nominated for this role, which is insane. Did you audition, or is it offered? I auditioned for this. Yeah. They didn't know me. They they reached out to me through my website. So you you got there via merit exclusively. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Now continue. Yeah. <laughs> I auditioned when I was in Australia. Yeah. Years back. Just yeah. The they, they emailed me and I sent in a self tape because I, I, when I opened the audition, at first I read the, like, the headline. It was like the hijabi woman. And I'm like, oh, let me guess. She's scared and running from her husband. Yeah. And then is I that like, always read what it. it is. That's always what it is, Abbas. Come on. You know this. Uh, no, I'm the husband. I'm the one chasing you. <laughs> <laughs> right? You're the angry You're chasing husband. a hijabi woman. Right. right? I'll but do it, the, but do I have to have an accent? You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> what with the accent? You come back. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. Exactly. No, but it is, cool. right? It's so stereotypical, this stuff, right? It's like, ugh. She leave kitchen. How she leave kitchen? Uh -huh, yeah. The cops. <laughs> she, where I'm hungry. Who to cook? How do I eat? How do I eat? Now I starve. <laughs> I just don't eat. What it, about me? <laughs> the other cop, the other, it's an ethnic cop. He goes, well, how do you eat? <laughs> yeah, uh, he's not wrong. He's not, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no. I, you know what? Just handcuff her to the kitchen. That's what I do with mine. <laughs> yeah, right? We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll process it. But no, it's it, then I read it and I was like, oh, like she was like smart and powerful and like, but also silly, which you never see hijabi woman yeah, cast yeah, yeah. as silly because yeah. it's like, how can you wear a hijab and also be cool? And have levity. You know what I mean, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. They're like, you must be strict and conservative and yeah. never speak. Like yeah. if you were, you know, and so it was like, really, I was like, whoa. So I paid extra attention to the audition and I really like gave it my all. They got back and they were like, we loved you. We want to see you in person. I'm like, I'm in Australia. They're like, we'll wait for you to come back. I was like, sick, sick, sick. And I came back and I auditioned and then I got it. And then I, uh, but I literally, this was my first film. So to be nominated for an Academy Award for your first film, buddy, I spiraled through so much imposter syndrome. Like people are like, why, why have you not posted yet? And I'm like, because I don't even understand what's happening. My, my agent, a week after, she writes me, she sends me a text. I still have it. She's like, Aliyah? post about it don't be weird like literally my agent is like don't be weird and i'm like i wrote back to her i was like i can't not be weird i'm weird yeah <laughs> like, this is yeah i, I know i know i get it with acting too like anytime something it's so funny how you put your heart and soul into comedy yeah but and then but then but then this is a, a very dynamic and big role mm -hmm. so that actually reflects who you are but for me roles i get are usually a line and even though that one line, that one line overshadows every fucking thing I've ever done in comedy. It's like, hey, all this stuff is my idea that I've 
realized fully it is my voice. Put yourself that, in. Yeah, that's jokes. But dude, with the way you brought that fresca in the boys and had no lines, but the way you put it down on the table, that's my boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? The creds people. No lines. Can I tell you? Can yeah. I tell you how many people like, okay, so yes, a lot of people have messaged me about Scarborough, which is beautiful, right? And like, it's really lovely. Um, but there's this, right? This CSA nomination. There's my world tour that I've put together myself with my blood and sweat. Which I think you should show right Which now. Should show right or now. finish Target, the point. The it's up to you. Uh, yeah. Coming to you, to Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is, oh, where did I find this from? Oh, wow, that's weird. I'm just, it, will it flip? It, it, Dante, is it flipping? Is it looking? Yeah, it looks good on the screen. It's not reversed. No. Okay, good. Nice. This is, this is my show. Where are you from? from? Coming to Toronto Fringe. Uh, July 6th to 16th. Uh, with rave reviews, I highly recommend it. $12 a ticket, what else should I say? But listen, so with that, and the CSA nom and all of this, you know what I get the most messages about? Some random commercial. My Skip the Dishes commercial yeah, that was on go. Super Bowl. People yeah. are like, yo, you made it, girl! I'm like, oh my God. Oh, but if it was on Super Bowl, I know why you retired flight attendant. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's no, all adding up. Oh, dude, it was a non-union. It was a non-union. Oh, no. I Honestly, dude, they I They made like wish... $100 billion off of it. I'm so, I'm yeah. honestly, I'm so upset. No, you I am can't so be. Upset. You can't be. It's, I'm so upset. Have you put out an album before? No. Yeah? No. Because you I should know. be on that sound exchange. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know what? I should talk to you about that. I, I feel like. I don't know it. I, I haven't. I'm. Learning from other people. I haven't set my stuff up yet. No. This well, is just when like you when you do, go. Let me know. Give me the ins. Oh, I'm, I'm trust figuring me. it out. I'm. I'm. Honestly, I. I thought about it last year. I was gonna do it over COVID. Yeah. Because I had some really, really good COVID material that I knew was gonna expire, and it was hitting so hard with people. I'm like, let me do this. I talked to this uh, uh, um, label, and I was like, can you do me a quick turnaround to make sure this stuff stays relevant? They were like, yeah, cool. Set it all up, and then. Fucking four days before I was supposed to record, COVID lockdown, everything shut down again. It was like the third wave. Wow. So I, I was supposed to record in Ottawa uh, at the uh, Laugh... Uh, Laugh Lounge. Lounge, thank yeah. you. And then that all fell to shit, unfortunately. Um, it was just going to be like a 20-minute short album with like my COVID stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so that didn't work out. And then since then, I thought about doing my album... But I honestly, for me, like, I'm like, you know what? Let me just keep finessing this a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. You that's know? totally fair. Especially if you're touring the your show. Yeah, that's that's it. Like, why would I not do stuff? it until I finish my the tour? The show, exactly. You know, because I'm still finessing. Every time I'm on stage, I'm still finding new new things and new... Like, I had so, personally, I had so many things that I've been saying for years. And I was like, I want... Th the biggest thing is that if I get an album... If I put out an album and the publicity that comes with the album, that will help facilitate my visa for the States. That's like a big yes. fucking pawn to Rook 3 move that Canadian yeah. artists have to do, right? Yeah. But the other thing was that, yo, there's so many bits I'm so tired of saying. I just want to burn them. And, yeah. then, and now I'm in that. I'm now I'm in that where it's coming out July 29th. I'm editing it, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. But like I'm writing like crazy. Like I'm writing like I've never, like I'm... I don't even remember it being like this ever since I've started comedy. Because at the beginning, it was like, that's a funny observation. Oh, that's funny. And then I would try it. Now it's more like writing about your life. And like now it's like more a little bit more coherent what you want to talk. You have something you want to talk about. Right. Before it used to be like, you see something funny and you're like, that's your fucking act for three years. You know, you're, you, yeah, you yeah, open yeah. with that squirrel thing you saw yeah, yeah, yeah. six years ago. Like right? some shit goes down and you're like, your homie, like just like his life is destroyed. And you're like, yo, you mind if I just do a bit yeah, about yeah, this yeah. real yo, quick? I, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like like a, an act <clears throat> full of those type of things yeah. that I was just so done with. And it feels great to like, and scary as yeah. fuck to like scorch the earth and start all over. But still, I'm like, at least I'll get, some royalties from it while it gets played. Yeah. It'll help facilitate my visa. Yeah. And now I'm forced to come up with new stuff. So yeah. I, in my, in the grand scheme of things, I think it's three wins. Yeah. You know? I'm glad, though. I'm glad to hear that you're writing more. And I'm glad that you're looking in for your stuff. Because honestly, like, you know, I, I, not that it's, uh, you know, look, s there's all kinds of different comedy. And all of them have their, their space, you know? But I feel like you're such an interesting human, Abbas. You've got a lot of story to tell. So if you can tell that story... You know, uh, and find a funny way of doing it. I think that people really connect to it. So that's great, dude. I'm, I'm excited to hear that.
Thank you. I, yeah. I appreciate and I And I agree with you. And and I think you're in the exact same boat. Like, you're interesting as fuck. You're n- I can't keep track of what the hell you're doing. Everything you're talking about, it's on some next shit that I'm like, this guy's all over the world. Like, I can't keep track of the experiences you're having. God knows how much fucking albums you could fill with the stories. Yeah. Flight attendant shit, layover shit. God knows. But, like, all I know is that, you know, all I know is, What's the reason Simpsons always beats Family Guy at the end of the day? And do you ever do you watch American Dad? Do you watch American Dad? American Dad used to be like that's like another thing Seth MacFarlane's team they made Family Guy and American Dad, and American Dad ended up winning in my point of view of like it being funny because you've seen Family Guy, right? Mm. And you've seen Simpsons. Mm, yeah, yes, but no, I don't watch a lot of TV. Hundred percent, yeah, yeah, but. Like, you get the references. Yes, I do. Family Guy's like, this is funnier than that one time that A, B, and C, D happen. And then it's a cut scene. Right. And then, but the, the main story, the, the spine of the episode is so flimsy because right. they're just banking on funny cutaways. Right. Whereas Simpsons would have a funny story and funny scenes, but the spine of the story was so strong. The story. So it's like, right. I feel like in my, and I grew up on Simpsons. I learned English from Simpsons pretty oh, much. Oh, really? I, yeah. And, and I've always loved, I loved all these comedy shows. I would watch them almost educationally. But what I learned in life is that comedy, comedy that has heart wins every time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, there's a lot of people out there just doing like, like baby rape jokes that are like, it's all dark material. Right. It's like, we know it's all lies. Your whole act is yeah. dark. We yeah. know all of it is lies, right? Yeah. There's that. There's or we like, hope so. <laughs> yeah. There's like, oh, I shit myself. Oh, I was, yeah. I, don't you, it just comes so close. The whole shit. There's all these and they're all funny. And they, they I all do have a shit them. myself story. It's very have, real. <laughs> no, I have these too. <laughs> but I'm saying if you look at your whole act, I feel like if the majority of my bits are funny with heart, then I'll have no problem in the future. Yeah, because I, I, I think that also, like, it's, it's you know, there's, there's a, I, and this is like a, now we're going to go into psychology and all of this stuff, but like. I welcome it. There's connections. There's connections that we make, right? There's connections that we make, um, you know, subconsciously to, 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 to stories and people. And when something resonates, right? When something resonates, then we, we hold on to that and we keep it for longer, Right. Yeah. So it goes to thing, a different level. Exactly. So when you're talking about a story with heart, you know, and a story that's real, only those are the ones that can resonate. Your your you know, the whatever reference you made to like the shit jokes and the blah blah blahs, like those things don't resonate. They're funny they're in the surface moment. Surface level funny. They're surface yeah. level and then they'll just like well ha and then it's gone. Where it's like when it, like you laugh from here, yeah. It stays in you. You know, it, it it really is like a really beautiful Okay. It's like you'll watch a whole act, a, a whole um, lineup I'll, I'll, all the time. I'll have friends come over to my shows. I have a monthly show. You know, I'll, all the time I have friends come. They'll be like, I'll be like, who's your favorite? That one guy. They can't remember what he said at all. But th- he was their favorite. You know what I mean? People just remember liking. Yeah. I, I was into the things you said. I don't yeah. remember anything even anyone said at this right, point. Right, exactly. You know, comedy shows, people don't even remember what they were laughing no. at. But it's just like, I fucked with that person. Yeah. Because it's just there's that you they bridge that feel connection. Something. Yeah. So I'm like, that is the key. That and right now I'm cutting my 30 minute special with the album. Yeah. And that is the thing. It's like we're taking this thing out. We're taking this thing out. We're leaving pauses where it's like, sometimes I I don't want to include a thing, but I'm like, that's I'll call that a heart moment where it's like if I was jagged as fuck, I would take that out, take out everything that's not funny. Right. But then you're left with this robotic thing. Right, right, right. You got to leave this in there, yeah, yeah, yeah. sprinkle it in like yeah, parsley totally. or whatever the fuck. Totally. Yeah, it you got to leave those it. moments because it's, it's, you don't want to just, yeah. It's, it's like your a steak. personality. It makes it feel more like it's like a steak. Yeah, it's like a steak. Have you ever had a steak with no fat at all? It's disgusting. Yeah. You got to have. Too lean. Too lean. You got to have a good amount of fat on a steak for it to be perfect. Too much sucks. Too little sucks. Yeah. I'd rather have too much. At least I can cut it off. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anyways, back I love to this flights. Analogy. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? love this analogy. Yeah. As you're saying this, I'm just like, I am so hungry. Yeah, me too. A By the way, Dante bring in the right steaks. <laughs> Dante is also Honestly, Michelin like chef. <laughs> <laughs> He's literally been cooking steaks. That's what that second platform is right? for. Hilarious, yo. But uh, yeah. Tell the people about the show, like. So yeah, so well, I've been I've been touring this show. Like honestly, this show is so. Um, I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of it, Abbas. Honestly, like really, truly, truly, I'm so proud of it. I've I've put myself in it, you know, and it took a long time for me to 
um, get there uh, in terms of like, you know, I'm such a private person. It's so weird. And people come to my show and they're like, uh, we learned so much about you that we never, like my people who've come to my show who like know me, but like, they're like, oh, we didn't know this stuff about you. I'm like, yeah, you know, cause I just like, I found ways of really like being able to tell my story because the thing is, is that I, I, you know, I, I wrote this show. I wanted to talk about, um, identity. Yeah. You know, uh, that was kind of the theme of the show. Where are you from, from? You know, and people are like, oh, like, you know, when you look at the title, you're like, oh, where is she going to go with this? And I'm like, I'm not out here trying to do these like hack race jokes. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what I felt like was always. Oh, leave those to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, 30, 30 minute album coming yeah. out July 26th. What it's is called, it? It's called Hackzilla. Hackzilla. I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> that would be actually a hilarious name. Yeah. For it's a, called Leave It To Me, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah. But no, I, uh, I like I just I felt like. When I first entered the industry, you know, um, I started in sketch uh, and uh, improv. And um, so when I was doing sketch comedy, I felt like uh, identity was being very much imposed on me. People were telling me what my story was based on the skin I was in, you know. Uh, and I was like, these are the things you should talk about or these are the things you should include. Like I remember at one point, I was in this one sketch class and uh, I was doing a... I was doing a a scene that I wanted to, uh, that I had started writing a sketch about uh, my my dad um, uh, coming in and like explaining to me uh, about like something. I can't remember what it was, to be honest with you. I, anyways, if I thought about it longer, but let's not sit here and pause on it. Yeah. But the point is, is that the instructor was like, great, like maybe we can like find a way to make it like more authentically in your father's voice. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what kind of accent he has. And I'm like, he doesn't. And he's like, oh. Of course. But, but because because you're <laughs> like, like, I mean, you're, and I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, he had an accent when he first moved to the country. But then people like you kicked the shit out of him, so he lost his accent. <laughs> They're like, keep doing Funny, what you're right? doing, honey. Keep you doing know, what like, doing. honestly, yeah. right? Like, I was just like, but it was just like those kinds of little kind of like micro things that you get in this industry where like people are constantly telling you. And like, this is like, you know, I'm like out here like, how long are we going to keep on assuming about people's experiences based on their culture or the skin that they're in? You know what I mean? Like, there are so many of us, the diaspora, the folks that were like, we don't belong to no one. You know what I mean? And like, the thing is, is like somebody like me, especially, and my family, you know, has been immigrating for generations, right? So like where I come from, when people ask me where I'm from, like I get that question everywhere in the world. But the thing is, is that I can answer it anywhere in the world except for the places I'm from. Because every place that I'm from will be like, no. Where are you from from? Yeah, yeah. every place I'm from will mm. say no. And so like those are the kinds of things I want to talk about, about my identity because I felt like... So if you're in Paris, it's easy to answer the question. What's that? If you're in Paris, it's easy to answer that question. Yeah. But if you're in like fucking Hamilton, it's hard. If I, exactly. If I'm in Canada, if I'm yeah. in Tanzania, if I'm in India, like they're like, nah, girl. You know what yeah. I mean? But if I'm in like. like hair curly, how? Yeah. It's how? So, right? Right. Uh-huh. Exactly. Exactly. Uh-huh. Um, it's weird though. Like some countries I go to and they are like aggressively telling me that I'm from there. Yeah. Like when I went to Mexico, I got scolded for not speaking Mexican. Yeah. Like not <laughs> speaking Mexican. <laughs> oh my God. That's what you, yeah. <laughs> I got that. Not speaking well, you don't Spanish. Speak it. Fuck. It's okay. You don't even have uh, to know that. Nobody does. Dun, 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 uh, for dun. not speaking Spanish because there's like, oh, el mexicana in Canada, no, I Espanol, they're like, oh, like the Mex- the the Mexicans in Canada don't speak, don't speak any Spanish, Spanish. <laughs> right? And I was like, no, 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 like, because I was like, I spoke broken like a little bit of Spanish, and I was like, like, petite. Them, like yeah. that's French. <laughs> or when I went to Egypt, he's like, where are you from? I'm like, Canada. Oh, he's you like, look Egyptian. Before that, and yeah. I'm like, uh, before that from Tanzania. He's like, before that, I'm like, here, before here. that from India. He's yeah, like, ah, I knew. Before that, <laughs> you were from Egypt. I'm like, I don't know that far back. Yeah, like, yeah, three hundred sure, years ago. Like, is that? Is that? You know that register as points for you still but it's cool because i started writing this story you know i started writing about this experience of mine and like about identity because i wanted to express that um and like whatever and then honestly like i i didn't i didn't imagine that it would have like the the impact that it does on audiences i really promise you when i say i'm proud of this show like it's it's so magical every time i do this show 
You know, and I'm not the funniest person you'll ever meet. I'm not trying to say like I'm the baddest bitch in the world, but there's something. She got heart though. Yeah, there's something really special about this show. Like people line up after my show to talk to me. I had to stop booking gigs after my shows because people would want to come and tell me their stories. You know what I mean and tell me how much it meant to them and like how like they things resonated with them. And I was like, wow, like I'm really onto something. And that started happening from the beginning. You know, when I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, and so then now over time I've been building this show and making it better and making it funnier and making it realer and making it more and more of what it already was in the beginning and like now watching where it is now like I I really do I feel so proud every time I get on stage and every time I get off stage when I'm doing this show you know I love it yeah it's really I love cool. it it's really cool and did, did, you were gonna tour this right before COVID I remember right yeah, I remember so I saw the From From uh, poster yeah right before COVID. my world tour yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I was you were like to COVID, it's like 2020 <laughs> and then I did the Slow first down, leg Slow I down. went to yeah I went to Perth did did the the fringe world there yeah fucking killed it got great reviews sold out my shows like amazing came back to Canada to continue filming Scarborough uh, because we had a very weird filming schedule because of the kids we couldn't film it all together we had to film it on the times off so I was coming back for their March break yeah okay to film for a little so I left February 16th yeah came back to Canada Went to the States for a little festival there that I was doing. Um, and then uh, came back from California on March 1st and then locked down. And I was supposed to fly directly back to Melbourne for the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. And then I was supposed to was do done. like all of it from there. But it was done. But what's cool is two years later, I picked up exactly where I left off. So I went In to Australia. the Melbourne yep. International Comedy Festival for 2022. That How's that the festival, Sydney comedy by the festival? Way. Fucking dope. Yeah? Yeah. How's comedy in, in Australia? I've never even been to Australia. Yeah, before. yeah. It's cool, man. It's really cool. Honestly, the first time I went to Australia was for comedy. I'd never been to Australia before, even yeah. though I'd flown around so much. I had no interest in going to Australia. I was like, of all the places in the world I can visit, what am I going to go to Australia for? Yeah, I could right? see giant cockroaches in, in Dar. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, you know what, what I mean? mean? Exactly, yeah. right? But then, like, for comedy, there's a lot of opportunity out there, you know? And unfortunately, Canada, we we do not take care of our artists here, so we have to go abroad to make money. As Abbas said, he's trying to get his U.S. citizenship or you not made work do with it. papers. You made you me mean? do it. But it's important. We got to like actually like big up our locals here. Like look at how many everybody has to go out to make it here. It's crazy. Like you know, look at how many comedians we've exported, right? And we only ever give them props when they leave. Exactly. Yeah. Which is unfortunate, but that's why I. Left. Well, yeah, the system's the system. Mm. You got to see the rules of the game and just play within it. That's and exactly just it. Right? To your that's advantage. Exactly it. So that's why I did it. I went and I went to make my paper, you know. But and have you done Edinburgh before? I want I we uh, me and Conrad applied did a at some African we we uh, pitched some African show that got denied right before COVID. Oh. Actually, got denied for the August 2020s Edinburgh. We got denied, and then COVID hit. We're like, well, fuck you, Edinburgh. Hey. Nobody's out there <laughs> now, are you? But then uh, I was telling him like, let's apply this here for next year. Um, I may actually just do. Like forced diversity or something like the show I've been running for like a couple of years. Yeah, you I didn't just, apply for it this year. I didn't apply. I know. No, I'm I'm gonna apply in the fall for next year. How come you guys didn't go for this year? Because I wanted to just tour Canada. Right. Okay. Yeah, cool, my cool. eyes were like on. Canada. Well, when you're ready to do it, just hit me up. We'll talk. You know. Yeah, because we got so much like application paragraphs and fucking shitty when you get denied after all that shit. But I want to go so bad because Edinburgh is like comedy camp. Yeah. It's literally like camp for comedians. Yeah. Where it's like. It's a month. Yeah. People show up like what, a week or two before just to get the lay of the land or uh no, I think a lot of people just show up for the festival. Yeah, really? It's so expensive. Everyone was like, Bro, you gotta show up before you see how people promote you, your room, your room, your what the, what room did you get? Uh this three boss, sisters doing, or some shit like nah, that. No, I'm doing the I'm doing the paid fringe. I'm doing one of the like the proper big venues. I'm doing the the Tron. Okay, so yeah. this is like the big this is more like a gala? Uh, it's the so there's paid fringe and there's free fringe. Free fringe is like they give you a room and you just gotta fucking pay what you can hustle the whole time. Mm -hmm. And paid fringe, you pay for a venue and they pay for tickets to come in. Okay, I mean, yeah. I'm gonna lose I'm, so much money. Dude. I know, but you may not. Number one, I number will. two, it's a vetted show from Perth. 
which and you got reviews existing from Australia, yeah, yeah. which count for something in Edinburgh. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like a random show coming I mean, out of nowhere. To be honest with you, I'm just like I'll put it out there. Honestly, like I'm going out there, I'm for sure losing money. My hope is that this show is in such good shape, and that with the nomination for the award as well, that I've got a little bit of momentum and heat on me. That by the end of doing that, I will walk away with management and an agent that is of a higher caliber. Caliber that I can now stop having to do my own be in the fucking and yeah focus exactly. more on my craft which is yes. really what i want to do because i have so much to do like i'm trying you know that's the thing right this is the artist hustle right like you you you're like a creative person you got so much you want to put out there but then you're busy drowning in paperwork I right know. and i'm like i want to write my tv show but instead i'm like filling out applications for my visa to go and work in this blah 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 like somebody do this for me you know i what know mean already so like this is where i'm kind of in that middle stage where i'm like i'm taking a really big risk going to edinburgh I'm definitely losing money, but you know what? I'm but it's an investment. It as an investment. Yeah, exactly. 100%. And I believe in myself. I believe in my product. I've been working hard at it, so I'm ready to take it to that like level. And inshallah, <laughs> send me good vibes, people. Send me good vibes. Inshallah, it'll work out. Your girl it's will gonna, be able to take it. It's all gonna to work a, out. Just having that faith in yourself. Yeah. That is the fucking catalyst you need. It doesn't even matter man. what happens you financially. To, if you don't believe in yourself, how anybody gonna believe in you? It doesn't. And you already got the fucking best picture. That's just a backup thing. Like, that's just like, yeah. it just adds to the accolades of the legend of Aliya Kanani. You know what I mean? You're going to kill it. You're going to kill it. I don't want to, I don't want to take it over. I just want to be able to make a humble living. You and will. And put my art out. You will. Out. It's coming. I want to be able to be like, I have an idea. It's so close. Somebody help me make it. And somebody's like, yes. It's you know so I mean? close. Yeah. It's so close. Yeah. I, I love feel it. it. I it's going to happen. I'm Especially that poster right there. It's ready. Oh my God, this That's poster? such a have hangable poster. poster. Excuse me. Hold that closer to the thing. Plenty to laugh at, at, at plenty to bond and plenty to bond over. My Bel- my Melbourne arts mm-hmm. feel connected to humanity through humor. Fourth wall media, right? delightfully right. tickling. I love that. <laughs> delightfully tickling. We- that will do well in England. You, you know, know what I mean? Delightfully tickling made yeah. me so happy. Actually, Edinburgh, Scotland, right? Yeah. 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 I don't know about that in Scotland though. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, was she, was she tickling? <laughs> drunk? No, I don't know. Yeah, no. Sick, I'm super, though. Super That's a proper, that, proper. Yeah, you're gonna kill it. I'm very, I'm, you know, honestly, I got to be real. I'm so excited to bring it to Toronto because when we're talking about resonating, in what city would this resonate more? more. This city is made up of people like just me like and you. you. Yes. You know what I mean? Right? And Dante, right? It's just a bunch of uses that like, where do we belong now? Because you go back home, people are going to be like, mm, 49. Like Canada boy. You know? Yeah. Right? Totally. Yeah, like, right? Like we don't, you? you know, so I think that this story is really going to sit a lot with uh, the immigrants. It will, and the name is great. Where are you from from? Yeah. Who did your artwork? Um, so this artwork was done by a very uh, talented human, Akil. Uh, he's actually, he's not a poster designer. He's just a fabulous human that I met. Look at this design. But uh, to be honest with you, I had this whole vision. Like I told him, I said, um, I wanted to, so the show title, Where Are You From From? The, the 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 photo, this outfit and this suitcase, listen, it was, I realized that I missed the, uh, I was going to miss the deadline for uh, putting the poster in for uh, the festival I was doing years ago, my very first festival. And I panicked. And then my girl Sarah in Mo- Montreal, because I wasn't even home at the time. My girl Sarah in Montreal was like, Aliyah, you know what? I think I know a photographer. Let me get in touch with him. So she hits me back up. She's like, guess what? I was like, she's like, he said he'll do it. And not only that, but I negotiated for you. I'm like, what do you mean you negotiated? She's like, he has to go back to Toronto in two days aren't you leaving in two days i was like yeah she's like he said that he'll do a photo shoot for you for a ride back to a ride to toronto i'm like fucking boss what (laughs) so now i'm like okay i gotta get my shit together i'm like i don't have anything to wear so i go through my girl adelaide's wardrobe yeah take out like three four outfits that i think i'm like i need to look like i'm traveling and i'm like cool and like 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 adventurous i don't know what to do and i'm like i want like a suitcase and then adelaide's like oh you know what hit up um uh shirley i think she's got those old-timey suitcases i was like sick just so happens to match Look at that match. God so is good. Happens. God is God great. God is great. Then I did the photo shoot and then I told my boy Akil, who I had met at a show. I, I didn't know him, but he was such a nice guy and he'd asked me to interview me because he was doing this project about Muslims. And he's like, can I interview for a few minutes? I was like, yeah, absolutely. So I hit him up. I'm like, hey, remember how I said yes to you? <laughs> he's like, yeah. I'm like, can you say yes to me now? I need help <laughs> designing a poster. He's like, yeah, okay, cool. I got your back. I'm calling he's on your service, Such Akil. a talented designer. And I was like, I want like a map in the background. I want me in this like blah, blah, blah. Here's the pictures, it's a, it's and I so want a paper well airplane, and I the paper like, airplane is very that was your idea. very symbolic. For but that was your idea. Me. Yeah. Why? Why? Uh, because I always like said like 
you know, like I didn't grow up with a lot, but I was like, I had a, a, a huge imagination. So for whatever I didn't have in terms of like the material things in life, I could create so much in my mind. Like you give me a piece of paper, I'll make an airplane and I'll make those dreams come true, you know? That's I, why I became like a flight attendant. I wanted to travel the world. And I'm so that person who was and like, you did. I ain't gonna just take no for an answer. I'm gonna find a way through the back door. You know what I mean? And so I was like, listen, I sat down, I interviewed all these people of all these different jobs. Like I l made a list of all the different travel jobs you could do. And then I asked friends who asked friends. And then I found somebody who worked as a travel guy, uh, like a tour guide, somebody who worked on cruise ships, somebody who worked as a travel agent, somebody who was working on a flight. And I talked to all of them. I found out the working conditions. I found out the benefits. And I figured out I could travel the most if I was a flight attendant. And so I did it. So I was always like this, this like girl who didn't have a lot, but found a way to find a lot. And that's the paper airplane. It's like, I love it. I'll make my dreams come true, you know? I love it. Just have you ever paper. <laughs> have you ever been to Madagascar? I'm not. I really want to go. I want to go to Madagascar. I, really go, I was yo. just talking to someone. I was like, "Yo, yo, my girl, her ex is from Madagascar." I'm like, "Madagascar? What the Buddy. fuck?" I know it just sounds Who's delicious, right? You're like, yeah, I googled it. They're like, "Is Madagascar nice?" They're like, uh, "Even though they are abundant with natural resources, Madagascar has the highest poverty rates in the world." I'm like, "Ah, oh, fuck." Yeah. But cool ass trees. I want to go there too. Yeah. Okay, I asked a couple questions that I just started doing in the like last year or something. Oh. Uh, this will be about tans. Uh, but are you half Tanzanian or? So my family, like it's like all over. Yeah, as far as I know, like my the skin I'm in. Yeah. Is India. Yeah. But it's questionable. You know what I mean? Like when you look at my features and you look at like you know what I mean? Like I've never done one of those DNA tests, but. It's gonna be um, a mess. But my parents, my grandparents were born in Tanzania. So, like, culturally, we're very, like, right? Gotcha. Okay. But uh, as far as, like, the skin, I mean, like, I would never say that I'm I'm not black. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, so, like, I, that's a that's a very different thing. Uh, Again, this is why I'm, like, so confused. Because then I go to India and they're, <laughs> this, like, this, She's trying to figure it out here. in the show. Come to yeah. the show yeah. and we help get a little closer at the end. This is yeah. really just. <laughs> I don't even know what I am. Help me figure it out. Yeah, it's called help me Where figure it out. Where am I from from is the question. <laughs> you know, it's not like, it's not like, I'm, at, like I'm not telling you. I'm asking you. <laughs> I was going to say, what's uh, something Tanzanians do you, you haven't seen anyone else do? Something you've seen out there or Tanzan? No one else does this besides them. Take, okay. If you, to, if you want to shake my hand, you go like this. Yeah. What? No, go like this. And now, uh, okay, <laughs> follow my lead. Go like this. Yeah. Straight, like this. Yeah. And then like this. That's how we shake hands. Actually? Yeah. Everyone go, does that? No, but it's like a thing you do. Like, not you don't do it like all the time, but you go like. Oh, even non young people do it? Yeah. Well, really? yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a, like a Tanzanian, like. Handshake. Really? <laughs> yeah. I know. I have my buddy is my good friend is no, Tanzanian. No, I mean, still old people do it, but like. We but all. then maybe he does it when he's around his family. Shake his hand like that. See what he does. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shit. Also, that, your that's hands like are surprisingly sweaty. <laughs> I'm a sweaty motherfucker. <laughs> I love how you you gave it back to me. You take, represent take it. Like it, I take, take the sweat. Take it. I'm a sweaty motherfucker. <laughs> She's exposed. <laughs> my exposed secret shame. Uh, okay. Next also, we ask how you are like five times, but what in different it? ways. How does it go? Because you say like habari gani, habari yako, habari ya, ya, you know whatever like. Like you ask, like, how are you? Yeah. How's your day? Yeah. How you feeling? Like those are all different questions. Like how you doing and like, how you feeling and like how's your day? You get them all things. at once, or you get them throughout the conversation. You, you get them all at once, kind okay. of thing. Yeah. So you go, how are you? How's your day? How's everything going? Yeah, everything or like, you're like, you're like, they're like, how are you? Like good. You're like how you feeling? You're like great. It's like how's your day? Amazing. Like it's like that. It's like very. It's beautiful. Yeah. And you talk to strangers. Everybody talks. You know what I mean? You smile at somebody, it's a conversation. Who uh, who is the butt of jokes over there? You know, like who's the who does Tans beef with? Who does Tans beef with? Yeah. Well they're like, this guy's a fucking They'll they'll beef they'll beef Eritrean. with the, like the <laughs> the, the, the the like inner inner tribes of like Tanzania. Like they're like they'll make like little jokes about like what? each other. You yeah. know what I mean? Like like the Chaga folk and stuff like this, like but like are some lazy some are assholes some are like violent <laughs> yeah 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 but i'm not gonna perpetuate these things. yeah yeah <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm she like, knows oh, she wanted to just say trying it. to catch me now she wanted to just say <laughs> it okay well i love it well hey let's land this fucking episode this has been awesome again just awesome. look into this camera tell people one more time uh you know we get listeners all over canada oh, yeah america True. but for the sake of 
uh, where you're going to be hitting. Is this all Toronto shows right so now? This is all Toronto shows right now. I'm doing the Toronto Fringe. A lot of Toronto Fringe. listeners, so don't oh, sweat good, it. Good, good, Toronto folks, listen, I'm going to be at the Toronto Fringe Festival. And if you're not in Toronto, but you know homies in Toronto, tell your people to come see me. It's a really good show. I promise you it's going to be a good time. Uh, it's from the 6th to the 16th. There's all kinds of weird show times. So if you work night shift, I got day shows. If you work day shift, I got night shows. Um, $12 there's a ticket. There's no escaping. <laughs> She's like, there's, uh, there's yeah. no excuse. There's no excuse. There's there's no excuse not to come. Uh, tickets are twelve bucks. Um, and which where is do they find them? Reasonable uh, on the Toronto Fringe website, or if you come through, come on my socials. You can hit me up on uh, Aaliyah Comedy, spelled with a K, so it's A L A L I Y A, and then Comedy you, spelled with a K, and that's all my social medias, and, and you'll be able tree? to find the yeah. I do. Okay, so and your link tree has a link for it, right? My link tree has a link for it. Um, and so just uh, scroll below. Her link tree will be in there. So in there, you'll get her social media, and you'll get a link to buy some tickets. Go see. Yeah. Where you from? From. And I'll be coming around. I'll be coming around Canada, inshallah, uh, later this year, um, touring. So just yeah, follow, follow the journey. You know what I mean? I'm gonna, I might hit up your city if you're not here in Toronto. I might come to you. Yeah. <laughs> there you have it. Oh. And yeah, you're like, damn, why did I do that thing? <laughs> Can you erase this? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, not, I'm not a weirdo. I Dante do this. is doing it as we speak. Listen, it's whatever it is, okay? I'm rolling with it. I'm 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 rolling with it. And if you're out there in Scotland, in make sure Scotland. to check her out. August? Oh, August 4th to 29th. And a lot, thousands of people go to Edinburgh. So yeah, if you're going yeah. to Edinburgh, where are you party from, with from? Me. make sure oh, to yeah. catch it. In Edinburgh, that's gonna be a show not to miss right there. God damn. Ooh, paid Edinburgh, baby. It's not a game. This ain't no free bullshit. Come this isn't come out and help me lose wheel. less money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Help her get to zero. Yeah. Guys, help her get help her break even. <laughs> Yo, from my end, just follow the socials at Abbas Wahab. My link trees below, but especially come out this Thursday, July 7th, the live meetup. Let's chat unscripted see what y'all fuck with i want to involve the show want to hear what the viewers and listeners have to say and uh it, and i'm gonna put it out so let's see how this goes yo Leah, thank you for thank coming you so on much. Thank you're the you. fucking best this has been a pleasure i appreciate you shout out to my boy dante thank producing dante. on the control station thank you for tuning in your boy boss Wab signing out peace <laughs>